lots of people on this small stage. Good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And we're going to talk about support and maturation of innovation projects. I would like to welcome Anna de Brabandra. You are Project and Financing Instruments Advisor at the Flanders Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Emmanuel Van Zeveren, Co-Director Wagralim. Marie de Wavrin, Head of Strategic Partnerships at Hectar. Valérie Cavillo, Technological Innovation Advisor, Cap Inov. Technological Innovation Advisor, CAP Inov, Valérie. Sophie Carton, Head of the Farming Lab AgroParisTech. Nicolas Nguyen, Director Europe of Agri Sudwest Innovation, and Christophe Baronheid, Business Coach at the WSL. I would say let's start with uh, Anne. And here are your slides. Good afternoon to you all. Thank you for being here with us today. I am Anne de Pravandra. And I would like to talk about my organization. And as there are other Flemish speaking people in the room, I will be speaking in English. Of course, you can uh, ask questions later in French. Uh, but in my professional work, I prefer to speak English. I'm trained as an agricultur agricultural engineer myself, uh, agricultural machinery. Uh, at the time, I have seen evolving it in all more from machinery to automation and now digitalization. Um, I'm working at Vlaio in the division of uh, financial support. Um, I will elaborate more on this division, which means I won't say anything about my colleagues in networking, in clustering, in uh, internal innovation. We have also, um, and um, yeah, um, Vlajo, as uh, written in the brochure, is short for Vlaams uh, Agentschap Innoveren en Ondernemen, and in English, it's uh, Flanders Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And with that, I have said everything in one uh, title because to our organization, it's core that innovation and entrepreneurship go hand in hand. We don't see entrepreneurs that do not innovate. We don't see innovation if you, bring it, if you don't bring it to the market in economics. And that makes, uh, well, the, the, the main bullet, entrepreneurial promotion is key to our mission at Vlajo. And in order to do this, we also support growth and innovation we, uh, are, uh, uh, we are convinced that uh, entrepreneurs should collaborate, so we very much support cluster actions. To that we have, well, big clusters, uh, spearhead clusters on logistics, on medicine, on uh, different teams, but also very small initiatives called uh, the Innovative Business Networks, and there's one in uh, Agritech. Um, at Vlajo, there's colleagues busy with um, making the environmental conditions towards um, entrepreneurs beneficial uh, in order to do all this, so uh, have stimulating environmental actions that can be on, on uh, brownfields being converted, but also on digitalization projects, a lot of these. Um, it's also key to our mission to be as Flanders standing in Europe. So a lot of things we do at uh, Vlajos is, uh, um, well, is open to European uh, cooperation. I will show uh, more about it there. 
And then last but not least in our mission, we try to be a one single unit uh, counter for entrepreneurs. They come to us, there's a no wrong door principle. That's our e-counter. A couple of figures about Flyo, They're, they date from 20, 20, uh, 2022, yes, from last year. You can see that our website was visited 1.9 million times and that our contact center answers about 2,000 questions every month. Um, we have a budget um, of 248 million euros dedicated to research and development and innovation. Um, there's some 600 million euros apart from that going to everything linked to Corona. That's a, a division in itself. Um, and we are 450 uh, people to uh, staff uh, Vlaio. Um, in my division, we're like 100. Um, and from those 450, there's also 50 who are called um, business um, advisors. They go around in Flanders, visit companies and guide them towards uh, innovation. Uh, having said that, I haven't introduced my proper, uh, uh, well, what I'm doing at Flyo. Uh, I, I, I told you I'm an agricultural engineer, but I'm serving as a scientific uh, officer in Vlajo, uh, in the division of financial support. So uh, when projects come to us, I'm one of the ones organizing the evaluation and being jury member myself. Um, in what follows, I will show you some of our um, financial measures we offer towards uh, entrepreneurs um, to innovate. Of course, I cannot go into detail for each of them. Um, what is uh, common to all of those uh, programs is that we give subsidy. It means you will never have to pay us back, but we want that you pay Flanders back in terms of jobs uh, and, and economic growth. Um, what they differ from, um, well, the, the type of uh, level of TRL we are in, the type of um, performing or, or audience we target on, the subsidy percentage will differ, but I'll show you some. The first slide is oriented towards entrepreneurs. You see there that we can uh, give uh, subsidies going from ID, over feasibility, prototype, demonstration, up to implementation. Um, the green ones are what we call uh, support for innovation. Um, the, the blue ones, the, the, the pale blue ones, are rather economical supports. So I'll focus on the, on the green ones. We have a measure for innovative starter supports, quite new. Uh, you can have uh, financing for a feasibility study, and then maybe research projects and development projects are taking the bulk of the financial means. It's 200 million a year. It's a growing annual growing budget. Um, and we have uh, also means for pilot projects. I've shown there in blue um, our international ambitions, or some of them. Um, I myself are representative in the era net, in, in the co-fund era net ICT agri food, which is on uh, everything artificial intelligence and, and data can bring towards the agri food chain. But uh, our research projects and development projects are also used in the schemes Eureka and Eurostars. I talked about the 50 people uh, of Flyo going around in industry. The figures that are mentioned there are the numbers of uh, enterprises they have reached last year and the number of enterprises they have accompanied towards a proposal at Flyos. So this is financing we hand to uh, entrepreneurs. Most of them are in uh, schemes that are open for uh, submission all year round. But what we also do is granting researchers in order that they do activities that benefit to a certain sector. So there I want to mention our uh, mandates, which are for pre-doctoral and postdoctoral research, but happening in a company, that's Backland and Innovation. Then we have a scheme for interdisciplinary collaborative uh, research. So that's rather on the lower TRLs. And when it's coming to the higher TRLs, 
we have uh, three schemes that are quite parallel, Agricultural Trajectories, TETRA, which stands for Technology Transfer, and COOK, which is Collaborative uh, Research and Development. Um, what they have in common is that we will fund researchers who have projects that then serve some teams that uh, play in, in different sectors. You see that the agricultural trajectories that's uh, particularly important for the audience today. Um, it's also a scheme that we use in ICT agri-foods. Um, I've also mentioned that Flyo is active and I have uh, colleagues specialized in that in IFRO and Interreg in Horizon 2020. Uh, we do our job there. I have a last slide with the take home message, the things that I would like you to uh, remember uh, after today. If you want to come to Flanders in order to grow, to transform, to innovate, well, know then that Flyo believes that innovation and entrepreneurship go hand in hand. So we see those things really going to header, uh, together, that we have a lot of supporting schemes. The list I have given was totally not complete. There's much more. Um, but, um, well, there's a, a whole range of them. And um, that uh, in most of those schemes, it's possible to collaborate on an international level. If you want more, come and see me or go to our website. Thank you for listening. Uh, voilà, bon, bonjour à tous. Uh. Good afternoon. I will try to present Wagralim in four slides. So it's Wagralim and not Vagralim for our French friends. So the WA with W for Wallonia. And it shows us that we are interested in agrofood in the broader sense, not just the restricted definition, but we want to work on the whole sector. So we are interested, um, we are interested in the chain from the farm to the table. We talked a lot about the big challenges that we have. What about um, um, innovation? What about sustainability? It needs to be worked upon on the whole chain. So what is a competitivity pool? For some, that might seem obvious. Maybe for others, it is less. And what is a competitivity pool? I took the definition again. So this is a grouping of companies and research stakeholders. So sometimes groupings cannot be too efficient. And so we are not only working with those stakeholders, we also work with the administration, with the Walloon government, defining the guidelines, the leverage that can be used. And so our role is to be a go-between and to animate a network. So we are more a network than a grouping. A network creates relationships, common reflection, and I believe that that is more our approach. And we are representing a, an efficient economic sector. So in Wallonia, agrofood is the first industrial sector and is the one that creates most jobs and that brings about most financement. So it creates a lot of direct jobs. So there's a lot of good reasons to innovate in the agrofood sector. And I believe that innovation will allow us to find solutions to the huge challenges that have been talked about a lot this morning. So maybe some um, numbers. We accompanied 75 projects, and you can divide those in research and development projects and investment projects. So an in innovative company in its research and development is a company that invests. And so everything is at the benefit of the company. And our sector needs, of course, a lot of training. 
we are lacking labor. We are producing more positions than people who actually want to um, occupy those positions. So 365 companies uh, touched by our project. And one thing that might be interesting for Wallonia and for Flanders is that we count a lot of P SMEs. And when you innovate, keep in mind that we need um, a tailor-made accompaniment for companies. And so most of those were SMEs. And then earlier, we were talking about regrouping of companies and researchers, and they need to produce results. And one of the results I would like to share with you today is to think about what does it create? What came out of it? If you look at the red line, this is like the evolution of industrial employment rate in Wallonia with all sectors. In green, you have employment rate linked to the agri-food industry. So we can see that our sector is very dynamic, creating a lot of jobs and creating a lot of indirect uh, jobs. So uh, two or three factors, for example. So this is uh, very beneficial to the economy because we create jobs, jobs thanks to innovation. And it happens through innovation. And you can look our curve in blue, dark blue, and we can see that the companies working in our cluster are doing very well. And the research and development is the one um, being the most healthy. And then maybe as a conclusion, Again, we are working with SMEs, so innovation is essential in our, the industry. It creates jobs, as I said. And we have collaborative projects that have a three, four years a deadline or period, functioning period. And for SMEs, it allows us to help them on a series of issues. So first of all, innovation is not only about R&D. It's not about only lab work. It's also about marketing. It's also working on exportations, working on the management. So innovation is not only about technology. There are a whole lot of elements that need to be taken into account together. If you only innovate in research and, de and development, it's going to look a little bit skewed in the end. And so for the company to sustain this innovation rate, it needs support in facing technological market and marketing challenges. And as a poll, as a cluster, we need to also maybe choose not pure research and development project, but also choose projects that support the company in its day-to-day -day life. Well, good afternoon, everyone. So to continue, um, that question of a comp supporting innovation projects. At Hectar, we are used to saying that we are an ecosystem, ecosystem dedicated to innovation in the food and agricultural uh, sectors with several challenges that we address in several uh, ways. We have an experimental uh, farm in Paris we have a campus dedicated to innovation. We accelerate startups. We support agricultural entrepreneurs. And we try to solve the issue of uh, attractiveness of uh, agricultural jobs. We try to uh, model um, new jobs to make them more attractive. 
so we were we had a, a patron at the beginning of our association which allowed the project to really develop um, he uh, so Xavier Nielsen our uh, patron uh, started the project and with the station that really attracts a lot of entrepreneurs so we work with companies foundations investment funds and together we uh, launch several projects obviously our partners have the same values as we do we think that agriculture is a perfect leverage to address the question of climate change and of all the challenges that we face. Why? Well, because 22% of greenhouse gas emissions come from the agri-food business. So we have a lot of uh, margin to act. And we know that 80% of these emissions come from the agricultural um, upstream work. So um, I will give you a few figures that were quite alarming to us and that really encouraged us to act. 6% um, of investments go to the agri-tech business, so that's not a lot. And 70% of these 6% uh, rather focus on um, downstream uh, agriculture, so for deliveries, for example. And um, when looking at environmental challenges, we think it's better, maybe or more important to focus on upstream agriculture. And at the moment, we only see 30% of investment going to upstream agriculture. At the moment, we have uh, 51 startups part of hectare and we have around two-thirds for um, upstream agriculture so we really focus on these uh, startups we see several who are here today there are four who are present Micofito, Hyperplan, Cascade and Veragro I think the acceleration program is based on three pillars first of all we are a startup accelerator not an incubator so we attract projects who already have proof of concept and we try them to we try to help them with uh, development and implementation so first of all, uh, tr commercial st uh, strategy to help them find new markets. Also a financial uh, pillar, we help them in fundraising, in uh, relations with a whole ecosystem of impactful investment funds. And it's very important to target the right investors because in the agricultural world, uh, it always takes a long time to implement new solutions. So you need to find the right investors right away. And then we also have a whole ecosystem. We were built with HEC and we have a huge network of experts and mentors uh, to help the startups and um, to, to, to uh, grow and to go to market. Several have already raised uh, funds and we think that we were able to contribute to all of that. In terms of commercial acceleration, we have an example of startup, Yakon, um, which produces Yakon syrup. Uh, so this is what we called the earth uh, peer, um, pear, sorry. And this startup really works from downstream to upstream, and it is launching uh, a new sector uh, for B2C or B2B uh, markets. We have launched a partnership with Naturalia, and they were able to uh, go to market in around 300 stores, Naturalia stores in France. So this is just an example of how we support uh, startups in France. Well, good afternoon, everyone. 
uh, will now uh, present to you Kapinov, which is part of CEEI, so the European Centers for Companies and Innovation. So what is our role? Well, is to support uh, project holders or entrepreneurs. We will advise them in terms of creation, growth, uh, internationalization, and circular economy. In our facilities, we also have an accommodation center, so all our project holders, when they create the structure, they can also be accommodated in our facilities and we share, we, we, we put at their disposal uh, rooms that are also open to uh, external uh, people in our seminar center. So it is a quite comprehensive offer. We go from uh, consultancy to accompaniment uh, to accommodation in our centers. So for uh, CAP Innov, we have decided to create three ecosystems because we realized that in most cases, in uh, the majority of projects we received, they were part of these three um, um, pillars. So we have ID to food, uh, for projects and companies growing in the agri-food sector. We have ID to move which um, is dedicated to uh, autonomous uh, vehicles and drones. So internally, we have a very, very big room to uh, test uh, drone flights we have the possibility to install centers if needed. So if you are interested or if other people are interested, uh, we can discuss it later, but that's not uh, the topic of the meeting today. Um, and we have ID to Green, which is a, a broader ecosystem um, and we are going to talk about uh, carbon um, emissions to really reduce the consumption, uh, uh, water, energy consumption, and reduce the carbon footprint. And then we also have international support. And I think I will have to put my glasses on. Donc voilà, on, la, la mission en fait d'ID to Food, c'est donc elle est. So ID to Food's mission, so as I was saying, it is really dedicated to startups, companies, and project holders, for whom innovation uh, is really at the heart of uh, of their uh, business. So um, the solution should uh, be. Um, healthy, local, and responsible uh, food uh, production. So we will offer accompaniment services. We will look at their uh, market plan, their business plan, and we also put at their disposal infrastructure. We have a kitchen and a restaurant, for example, which allow project holders to test their products before launching it to the market. So they will be able to test it with the customers of our restaurant and collect information and feedback on the projects that on the products, sorry, that they are developing. We work with the lean method. So before uh, going to market with a product, you need to ask the consumers for their feedback to see if the product um, lives up to their expectations, if the product offers the functionalities that the consumers expect from it. So we offer our kitchen and our restaurant for uh, the project holders to perform their tests 
And in terms of support, we will really challenge the project holders on their market, and we will give them tools. We will teach them how to question the market to see if what they want to develop is something that the market wants and is expecting. So we help them, we teach them how to uh, lead exploration surveys and interviews. So to really question the persona that we identified for our product and see if those people are ready to pay for such a product because there are ways of interviewing that will say, yes, I'm interested, but uh, are you ready to pay for it, to buy it? So um, in that logic, what we are going to work on is really the validation of the market interest for a specific product. And then my own role internally for ID to Food is to really uh, support, in a technical and technological point of view, the project holder. The idea would be to challenge the project, to see which technologies will be used to produce, uh, with whom um, the product will be uh, developed with universities or research centers, or maybe other startups or companies that will be able to help them in the product development. So this is what we call the, um, innovate, the technological innovation networks. So I work with CAP Innov to support project holders or companies in the agri-food sector. However, my uh, action field is the whole of the Walloon region. So for the Walloons who know the functioning better, in each province, there's uh, a CAE. Uh, in Namur, it's the BEP. And the BEP will really support you in the economic aspect of your project, while I will be supporting you with the technical side of your project. So there are several tools that are uh, offered uh, in that framework uh, in Wallonia. And I really think that you should uh, take advantage of that and use us at the best of our capacities. And I think that's all for me. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Sophie Carton, and I will present to you the incubator of AgroParisTech that we called Formin Lab. And before that, I really wanted to come back to the description of what AgroParisTech is. So Erwan Persson uh, quickly talked about it this morning, but this description is really key in understanding what we wanted to create as an incubator in our institution. So it is a higher education institution with uh, around 3,000 students, uh, PhDs, um, interns, and so on. They are trained in agronomy and life sciences. We also have 250 uh, professors and uh, professor researchers who work in 22 um, joint research uh, units in collaboration with other um, research uh, bodies. And with all of these people, we are able to support innovation. And this is why we created what we have called InLab. What is an in-lab? Well, the main objective of an in-lab is to contribute to solve issues that can be quite different and that will use all the skills and study areas of uh, agroparitech. 
the idea is to uh, create solutions, uh, meeting, um, identify needs at the service of uh, concerned beneficiaries, and mostly in the field of agriculture. We will also uh, develop a company or host uh, varied projects uh, such as entrepreneurship, innovation, design, organization, and so on. And since we are a higher education institution, we also want to uh, promote training, creativity, and the involvement of students in uh, the framework of an active pedagogy. In labs can also uh, promote collaborative approach uh, th uh, between uh, stakeholders, um, for example, research and uh, teaching stakeholders. So we have several in-labs in AgroParisTech. Uh, each one has its own specificities and focuses on one region. So we have a farming lab in uh, experimental farm in the Parisian region. We uh, work a lot with the food in lab, which is the food processing uh, component located uh, at the headquarters of AgroParisTech. Those in labs really focus on the proof of concept. So we really focus on the upstream of uh, scientific and technical uh, developments. We also try to explore the feasibility to demonstrate it and to look for and quantify the impacts of the project. So they are physically and thematically identified. They cover uh, various areas of expertise of agroparitech, so biotechnology, food processing, and so on. Uh, in labs are open and welcoming spaces that are integrated in the university ecosystem uh, for people, but also for equipment and evaluation. They interact with uh, training and research centers and they hold innovations um, that are uh, really accompanied by AgroParisTech innovation. So let's focus on the farming lab that was officially launched in 2018. It is in Grignon, around 30 kilometers away from Paris. That farm has been experimented for quite a while now. We have around 200 cows and um, 600 uh, ewes. Um, we also have experimental parcels and agroeconomic uh, lands uh, where we can do more systemic uh, experimentations. We also have a processing tool that processes around 800,000 liters of milk per year. And we also have uh, energy production tools. So we are uh, building a methanizer at the moment. We already have one that we use and then we have also photovoltaic panels. And we have uh, measure and analy analysis tools um, that we can access through the labs that we have, in addition to the expertise that is given to us by the teams. So we have uh, accompanied seven startups and 25 companies. So we don't only focus on startups because um, we really want to go in the whole spectrum. So from innovation to uh, solutions that are closer to be ready to market. And that helps us to also fund uh, the support to startups. We have also supported 60 collaborative projects, and the tested solutions are very varied. We have inputs or uh, crop equipments, 
uh, tools, machines, and applications based on imaging and or uh, telesensing. And in terms of uh, TRL, we have various uh, levels. We can go from level one to level nine, but we will really help them go from level one to level nine. Bonjour, donc je, je prends la suite. Bonjour à vous, Nicolas Nguyente. Je... Hi everyone, I'm Director of Europe for Agri Sud Ouest Innovation. I will go over the slides here. So we have a very similar structure to Wagralim for France. So we are based in the southwest. We cover Occitanie and Nouvelle Aquitaine regions. So you see the um, cities here. So we have Toulouse, Montpellier, Bordeaux, and Limoges. Those are our main offices. And same principle as competitivity polls. So I often present us as um, ecosystem disruptors. So we want to promote innovation in the market and hold that as projects to really end up with innovative and disruptive uh, products on the market. In the services that we offer, we can see networking. So we have around 400, 450 members. I see a lot here, uh, Institut Agro, Axioma, Hyperplan, so Toupieux Organics. Um, so those members are here today. And networking is key to share ideas. We have a lot of uh, events throughout the years as well. And then we also focus on projects because our historic action is to um, promote projects to help them uh, get mature and to lead them to receive funding. So we go from farm to fork, but as far as Agritech is concerned, in our ecosystem, um, we focus on soil quality. We have a program on uh, re re restoration of nature in the Southwest. And we also want to present another project in September. The second important pillar is water, because in the Southwest region, we don't have a lot of it anymore. And we are very, um, we, re we really focus on the solutions that we could find to optimize the use of water. Then there's also the digital side of agriculture. So precision, digital agriculture with a lot of data and tools. Um, in the region, we have a long history of aerospatial uh, work as well, um, uh, remote sensing around Toulouse. So uh, the use of images and uh, other tools in decision making, for example. So we will use uh, tools to valorize, uh, to value data and to really uh, track um, the data from farm to fork. What is very important as well is agricultural robotics. We have the FIRA, which is the fair for uh, agricultural robotics. And we see uh, various uh, startups that are very active in the field. We have talked this morning about Robagri as well, uh, which uh, is rooted in our region. And the other important element um, for us are biosolutions, so uh, alternatives to uh, traditional inputs, um, and how we can integrate those products in integrated uh, pathways so that they are uh, widely accepted and used. We have talked about TRL a lot, and that's a good thing because today we have financial tools that help us go to a level eight or nine of TRL scale. Um, we can really go to higher levels, but there's also the question of business readiness level. So with a lower TRL, um, we need to work on that. 
we need to improve the efficiency and the adoption of some products on a broader level. So we can also uh, present projects to really um, make our ecosystem grow. So as I said, we, are, we have around 400, 450 members, and you are more welcome to uh, join us if you wish to do so. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, your participation to this afternoon. So my name is Christophe Baronade. I'm a business coach in a technological in incubator, which is called WSL. It's a small company funded by public authorities in Wallonia. It is around 20 years old. And its main mission is to uh, support people who want to create a company, uh, for example, on the basis of the academic research or uh, young uh, startups um, that developed a form of technological innovation because it is really at the core of our business with engineering science. So we really support uh, our uh, members at all the steps of um, the creation of the company with independent coaching. So we are a team of six coaches. We are all trained in engineering and we, have, we all have experience in entrepreneurship. I, have, I graduated from this faculty I'm specialized in uh, veterinary sciences and I continued in uh, business management studies and I was able to participate in the creation and the development of around 10 startups, uh, 10 uh, companies um, during my career. So most of the time, the companies have a scientific or technical background, but we support them in business management, uh, interaction with clients, uh, um, employees, managers, uh, investors, banks, because that's not easy for them at all. So I will try to wake you up a bit by uh, showing you a tool that we developed, MatMax, it is available on our uh, website, and I will invite you to uh, have a look. Um, you can download this tool on the App Store and the Google Store. So it's a quite simple tool, but that really sums up our action. We try to um, improve the project on the technical side. So we have a component that works in the lab and we try to um, test it in a prototype, a prototype in a simulated environment. And then we go to the real world and we'll arrive to a product that can be sold and sold at a larger scale. So that's for the technical side. But most of the time, we realize that um, when we start in the academic world, uh, the projects are good, uh, technically speaking. Uh, the prototypes are livable, but we don't know what to do with it, to whom we can sell it. So the second side of our coaching is talking business. We try to identify the clients, what their needs are, what are the product market fits, and then we really progress to a first a sale and then a business model that can be supported by these sales. So we go from demonstration to prototype to a product sold at a larger scale. What we try to do with our uh, uh, members is to avoid extremes. So a prototype that uh, works but is not interesting or uh, someone who is great at selling, but with an invention that doesn't work. So in both cases, the company is not livable because it is not able to sell anything. So the services we offer 
So we have a team of business coaches. Uh, we complement each other with uh, financial specialists, communication specialists, but we also work with a network of partners. And one of the more is most important is the specialist of uh, intellectual property. Uh, we need to think about these strategies. We also have the patent option. Others will choose other options. And then we have uh, several modalities. But intellectual property allows you to evolve in a niche market, for example, because you have a strong uh, competition barrier. We also work in a very integrated way with the academic and political worlds because we are in the innovation market. We want to be disruptive and we need the audience and the users to adopt our products. And that's really true in the agricultural world because one of the basic mission of uh, this world is to feed the population. And so we are talking about processes, for example, we talked about um, machines today. We uh, can uh, identify, uh, use drones to identify diseases in the fields. You also have crop identification because some are more resilient to some diseases. We also improve irrigation methods. We can also uh, produce uh, alternative drugs for uh, the plants or the animals. And in the agricultural world, we always need to uh, focus on the impact on societies. No one is surprised today to see strawberries in the supermarkets all year long. And that is in contradiction with uh, local economy objectives or uh, the respect of seasons. In the way that we uh, work, we have uh, trainings because we try to uh, give knowledge to business owners. So once again, what does it mean to launch your own business? We work with uh, various relays, for example, for international affairs. And France is our first foreign market. Well, there's the question of uh, language, obviously, but there's also a cultural identity. And that's very true in the agricultural world because we can speak the same language and our production system are quite similar. The last uh, element that I wanted to mention which for me is the most important, in addition to the ID value, is that 92% of uh, companies that we support uh, have a survival rate above five, uh, five years, which is very good in the startup world because sometimes they can sell an invention uh, in a niche market. And uh, daily, we support around uh, 70, 80 uh, companies, and we have a project pipeline that is quite similar. So we think that our coaching model with uh, experienced uh, coaches and a group of partners that can really open doors and break down barriers uh, in terms of uh, the growth of the company is fruitful and works. Uh, should I give you the floor? Yes. Thank you very much for those very interesting presentations. Wonderful. I would like to finish with an open question you sometimes talked about supporting projects whose um, development phase was longer than usual and maybe thinking more long term. So how do you deal with this complexity when it comes to financial support, as was mentioned by Marie, from a technical aspect, as Valérie said, but also in the global economic contact, context, which is more and more complex. Thank you very much. I will start in WSL is that we offer a long-term support. 
So usually we are partners for five, seven years with our companies. Some companies want to stay partners longer than that. And one core uh, principle is flexibility. So on the CRL scale, we try to uh, act smartly from a technological and commercial aspect. But sometimes, in reality, we need to pause. Sometimes we need to backtrack. Sometimes we need to pivot. We need to question the choice of technology with the client. We need to think about the client. We need to think about the impact on the client. And so one example experienced in France with a company who's doing precision farming, putting a decision help tool that allows the farmer to better choose the dosage and the moment when to fertilize with uh, nitro uh, with um, du conseil agronomique. nitrogen. And so for a long time, the price of cereals and grains was too low. There was a margin issue. And all of a sudden, we understood that we were all fed by a country, Ukraine. And that had quite a horrible impact on the price of cereals. The prices went through the roofs, but also on the price of inputs. And in some days, following a geopolitical movement, which was huge, farmers were wondering, is it actually smart to use so much nitrogen on one parcel for a sales price, which is actually squeezing my margin? But the market opened up because the price of cereals went up because of the context. So what do we do at the WSL? And I am established a link with economical and political and research world is that we are trying to take uh, the context into account. We try to anticipate and we try to uh, take that into account in the growth model of the company. And so at the governing board level, with the st with the shareholders, we try to um, influence and raise awareness so that to make the best the best possible choices at the best moment. I will try to rephrase the question so I can bring my own answer. So in Agritech, the projects are very complex. And so the question might be, how do we deal with this complexity? When it comes to InLab, we use research to try and find answers to that complexity from a technological and scientific point of view. And maybe more concretely on projects, uh, for example, testing inputs for um, animal feeding using additive supplements or using raw materials uh, for vegetable production. We can work together with our partners. They can be uh, well-implemented companies. They can be SMEs. They can be multinationals. They can be startups. And we can uh, implement uh, trials protocols. And we use well-implemented, well-proven methods by researchers. And we also use measurement tools, uh, cutting edge um, tools. And so we can use solutions and tools that have been used so we can use a predictivity of the quality of products to give you an indicator or when we, we can also look for data about the flows of um, inputs and chemicals in the soil in the air in the water and so we can use all those data to try and um, deal with the complexity linked to the living Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. On those wise words, we will close this second workshop of the afternoon. Thank you very much for being with us today, and thank you for listening. Have a good afternoon.